this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the oscillating hook system of a Singer Model 99K. Or what's, what's left of it. I've been slowly kind of dismantling as I've learned about the machine. And I want to take the hook out. And I'm going to take the hook out and, and look at the parts underneath and so forth and put the hook back in. But I am not going to show how to time the hook to the needle because I've got the needle bar out. And frankly, I haven't figured out how to do it, how to time the hook to the needle bar and get the needle bar at the right height. So I just want to give you a heads up that, uh, you know, if you take out the hook, when you put, put it back in, you have to do timing. And if you know how to do that, that's great. But if not, I'm just, I'm just warning you. <laughs> I don't want you to take it out and put it in and then uh, be upset that I didn't say how to time it. If you saw some of my other videos on this, you, uh, I showed how to remove this uh, bobbin area parts here. And I also showed how to, uh, to, to the presser bar system, the needle bar, thread take up system and stuff like that. Um, but I, I put the feed dog and the bobbin positioning, uh, bobbin case positioning bracket back in. Uh, just to show that you, you know you're going to have to remove it if you want to take the hook. If you want to do some real serious cleaning down here, but the other thing that I'm thinking is going to have to happen is if you have the pressure bar uh, system in there, and, and remember the clamping screw on the on the bracket here. Um, I think you're going to have to loosen that screw and pull the presser bar up because the hook is probably going to hit it when you try and take out the hook. So I just want to give you a, a heads up about that also. So, um, to take these out, they each have a set screw uh, down below. And I'm, I'm going to remind you how to do how to do that um, on the uh, feed dog. There is the the feed bar here uh, coming down, and the uh, L bracket of the feed dog is right in there. And there's a little set screw. Well, actually, for a feed dog, it's one big set screw that is right here holding that in. So you remove that set screw, and then we'll be able to pull the feed dog out the top. And then on the positioning bracket, um, let me turn this so that this kind of makes an opening. You can see the end of the bracket uh, way up in here whoops if I move the camera you might be able to see that um, way up in here and I had to put a punch on that to to punch it out to get it to come out okay and but first there's this uh, chrome set screw set screw on the side over here that is holding the hinge post of the positioning bracket. So you need to remove that set screw to to take uh, to be able to release the uh, the hinge stud. And then I use just a a nail punch to go up in here on the end of the uh, stud and tap it out. It just it didn't want to pull out and I didn't want to wreck anything up on top. So here's my parts. Let me put this back up here and then here's the feed dog that already that already fell out. You know that, that just sits 
sits in the slot there so once you take the set screw out the feed dog can be pulled up and out and here's the uh, positioning bracket complete meaning it has all the parts including the oil felt that I put in and the ejector but that's the little stud that you punch out from the bottom that it's that it hinges on so you release the set screw and punch it out it comes out so what you're left here is a is a real good view of the oscillating hook and it's a horizontal oscillating hook meaning the hook sits on a horizontal plane versus the vertical hook that's down here like on a 301 or a 221 featherweight or a lot of commercial um, machines you see down here this is a horizontal hook but it oscillates it doesn't rotate on, on a rotary hook the hook just keeps going around and around counterclockwise and that's what makes it rotary on an oscillating hook it tick tocks back and forth so here is the point of the hook right here and if you watch that it's going to come down to about six o'clock and cast off the needle thread it picked up so the thread can come around and make a lock stitch but then instead of the hook going around it's going to oscillate back up to a little after 12 position and then grab another needle thread and bring it down so it's just like a tick tock oscillate back and forth all on the left side here up grab the thread down cast it off grab cast grab cast so it just oscillates back and forth so that's that's a nice uh, view of what the hook looks like from up here and then to take this uh, hook out I gotta go back on this uh, bot bottom bottom side now. Get some padding under there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can I get any closer here? I don't know. Is that? Uh, let's see if I get my. Is that showing up pretty good here? All these parts. Yeah, so this little circle, see that uh, bottom of the hook shaft is right there with the little hole in it? That's the hook shaft that holds the hook. And it is clamped in this little piece right here, and it has a clamping screw, and that's the oscillating hook crank. And this big part over here is um, the oscillating hook bell crank. Okay. And those two cranks are held together with a connecting link. So if you think about the needle bar up above, how it had a needle bar... A connecting stud with a clamping screw that connected to a link that went over to the thread take up system and that's what operated the the needle bar this is the same kind of thing uh, the power is coming through this pitman rod from up above and it goes over and it's going to move this bell crank back and forth oscillating back and forth Okay, and then the bell crank is has this connecting link over to the hook uh, shaft, and that's the hook crank. So that's how everything moves there. Okay, and there is a set screw. Well, no, it's not a set screw. Uh, it it would be. more correct to call it a clamping screw because that's what it does when you tighten the screw into the hook crank it clamps the crank around the shaft 
and that's the only thing that holds the shaft to the machine is this crank and the clamping screw so uh, let's see let me get a screwdriver here and we can loosen that uh, screw and you can remove the pressure on that clamp and then we can get the the hook shaft out of there now you can get to the screw down here like this or some people I understand uh, move it down there to get in from this angle and you can also do it all the way over the other side and come in from behind the connecting link up there so it's just where your position and the machine is and where you can get the most torque on it because you have to you have to kind of hold the crank steady because when you start pushing on it it wants to move away from you so I'm going to come down here towards the bottom and hold the cranks in that position there we go and then I'm going to loosen that uh, clamping screw enough that it's releasing pressure here now when I tried to get the hook out the first time there's just no way so I got to use my punch again where I had punched out the the stud for the pos bobbin case position bracket now I can punch out the hook shaft by just getting there and tapping on it with my little rubber mallet and when I got it out of there it was had a bunch of old dried up oil on there and that's why I couldn't get it before so let me back out here now and I'll show you the hook here is the hook and uh, just so you know th this way this hook is laid out of a you know a piece of metal and everything it looks the same as a rotary hook like on a like on a Singer 401A or the 500 Rocketeer you know the hook itself is the same it's just uh, on a rotary hook it has gears or pulleys and a belt that just make the hook go round and round and this has the bell crank that makes it oscillate okay and uh, I want to take this opportunity too because I was recently asked about this um, in a lot of the manuals it appears you're supposed to put oil in here but this hole doesn't go anywhere I mean it just goes in can, can you see the can't even see see that little piece of metal sticking out so what is that three sixteenths of an inch maybe and it doesn't it does if you put oil in there it just sits there it doesn't go anywhere it doesn't come out underneath it doesn't go through to the hole on the bottom which is even more shallow about a sixteenth of an inch and um, I am no machinist but I've got the feeling that those were used to hold the metal on the lathe while this was formed but you don't need to put any oil there and then a couple people told me no that's the the uh, bobbin case and bobbins sit on there and if you don't oil it it's going to wear it out but if you take a, a, I put a steel bobbin in here because it shows up better than the plastic and if you put the bobbin case in there and if you look I don't know are you going to be able to see this if you look through there there you see that space between the shaft and the bottom of the bobbin you know there's like a quarter inch there so there's no there, there's no oil getting on anything if you put oil there except it gets thrown all over the place maybe so I just wanted to mention that since I'd been asked about it uh, recently so there's the hook now I, I first I degrease it and then I put the whole thing in my ultrasonic cleaner just for the heck of it since I got one and a lot of these parts I've done and 
cleaned up real pretty but you can see why I use the punch from below because if up above if I was trying to pry this out with a screwdriver or a wrench or something I, I think that you could bend this and it wouldn't take much before you'd have a problem on your hand so you're better off to take a nail punch or a you know a sturdy wood dowel or something and, and punch this out uh, from the bottom to, to break it loose and you can use penetrating oil and oil and heat and stuff like that if you like it, you, you know it turns in there so you the hook turns so you think it would come out real easy but I had the heck of a time I think it's just milled really fine there's not much wiggle room so uh, anyway that's the that's the hook and uh, let's see if I can get this <clears throat> and some light here and take a look part of this that just fell off that's the crank with the screw that I just loosened and it goes on the connecting link from behind kind of like the needle bar system you know that one piece comes from behind and it's not it's not screwed on here or anything it's just like that and then the crank fits over the hole where the shaft you know this hole right here for the crank and the shaft so this will just kind of fall off probably if you're messing around with it so don't be surprised if that happened to you and that's the oscillating hook crank with the clamping screw this is the connecting link and you can remove this uh, hinge screw right here and take it off to clean it and check it if you want and then this is the bell crank but there's another piece up here that's called the the uh, what is that the feed raising bar the feed raising bar right here and I want to I want to show you this feed raising bar because in the parts in here there's a couple of steel rollers and one of mine I don't think had been lubricated and was dried out and it wasn't re really rolling it was just dragging on the metal so that is you know that's not a good situation so uh, when I figured out how to open it up I figured out oh it's got a couple rollers one was turning one wasn't so I wanted to show you that now you could maybe you know clean them and and degrease them and stuff without taking them apart but uh, just in case I fear let's show you how to do it and this uh, free feed raising bar has a hinge screw right there that screws into part of the frame the casting of the machine and holds that arm and allows it to hinge and it's a pretty good pretty good size hinge screw I figured I'd take that off now you can see I've cleaned it and oiled it and everything okay and then this uh, you got to kind of pull it up. It's got a fork on the bottom here, and uh, I'll show you the rollers and stuff, and see if I can there. I can kind of maneuver it out. So here's the bottom of it. See that? See that fork? Kind of like the forked feed connection up on the top of a machine. And this, see this roller? okay so this is the roller that was still rolling <laughs> uh, when I took it out and I can I'll show you in a little bit where that rolls on a place on the back of the bell crank okay so it's it sits in there like that 
and that roller goes in here and rolls in the bell crank as the, the it goes back and forth. But on this uh, arm here, there's another roller. And um, this is what I would call the feed bar. This is where that set screw grows, and this is the slot dog, so I would call it the feed bar. And on the feed bar is another roller, and that's what that's what this fork rolls on, like that. Okay, and this is the one that was not um, rolling, or wasn't rolling very good, and you could hear it, ee, ee, ee. and uh, that's a bad sign, you know, metal on metal. So that's why I started taking this apart. And I couldn't really see it very good and get at it, so I decided to um, take off the bell crank. Right? The hook bell crank. So it's got a big old hinge screw on there. Look at that. So, and it just turns to the left. And, uh, you know, these were all mucked up and stuff, so I'm glad I took them apart and got the old dried-up gunk out of there and stuff. But they're very nice polished steel, and they cleaned up real nice. So I pulled that out. And now I've got this bell crank that's on a hinge screw attached to this uh, pitman rod that brings it power. Right, and I, I can't get here and get the screw off. I can now get to this, and that's how I was able to, to just clean it with crud cutter and alcohol, and then oil it, heat it up, and get it moving and freed up, and it works real nice now, you know. But then I decided to take a look and hear where the roller goes, so I just decided, you don't have to do this, and I didn't. But I just decided to take the pitman off, and it's and it's just a, a little screw over here. So I took that off, and it's it's a short screw. It looks like a it looks big on the on the head of the screw, but it's like a little stubby guy. So then I could just pull this off right there. All right. This is what brings the movement from the top. See, there's a little clamping screw too, if you need to adjust it. And then I've got the bell crank here, and the bell crank is held on. I didn't take this one off, but this is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see this area where that roller goes back and forth like that so as the bell crank goes then that roller um, sits right in there can you see the raised sides that that's where that roller goes uh, back and forth in there Let's see if I can wish I had my third hand again but as the uh, crank goes, well, I can't, I can't make it all move. Well, maybe I could do it like this. I don't, not like that. No, it moves like, it moves more like that. Yeah. Uh, that that roller, anyway, sits in this area, and that's as it goes back and forth then it's it's actually like that and the fork sits over there on this roller like that and that's how the pieces move together they're they're not really bolted together or anything um, you know it's like the end of all these things one end is attached to the frame and then the other pieces are just kind of jigsaw puzzled together and they work together so I was glad I got this off 
and I got this all cleaned out and polished and all the stuff out and you know took my bottle brushes to all the openings and got everything all cleaned up and oiled and whoo wow really really working nice and no resistance and everything so I thought I'd show you that since I did that too and then it kind of I had to think for a while oh how do I get that back together now but the best way for me was to start by putting this end of the pitman back on the connector over here and putting that little stubby screw back in there and tightening that up and like I said this is an end that's anchored to something right in this case it's anchored to the shaft coming from the top okay so you see how this will rock back and forth and then the pitman transfers the power over to the crank Okay. Then I got this kind of back up in here, but I have to put the um, raising bar, the feed raising bar fork back on that roller of the feed bar. And then I've got to get the roller here into the back area of the bell crank. Right? And it just does. It really does. It just kind of goes together like a little puzzle. I'll put the fork over the roller there. And then if I lift up this uh, bell crank and get it up in here. I can slide the roller on that forked end uh, into the area of the bell crank. I'm just, just going to quick put this um, screw up in there to hold it. Okay, but there's the roller. If you can, here, can you, can you see it? If I let the pitman and the bell crank fall down you see how that roller fits in that area when you lift it up yeah okay just like that right so then this is where the big uh, hinge screw goes in to hold the pitman and the bell crank to the frame all right and then the connecting link comes over the top like that and the hook shaft crank or the hook crank comes in from behind that connecting link right just slides in the hole from behind there like that and I don't I don't back remember. and look at all the pictures I took but I don't believe there's a screw here. I think that's just the free movement. But when I put on my crank, I'm sure that the set screw ends up on the inside here, like where it was when I took it off. Not pointing down or away from the mechanism, but the, the clamping screw points up into the mechanism area. Okay, then I'll turn the shaft here and get that crank lined up. Then I can go up above and put the, the hook back in and put the hook shaft in the hole, right? And get it back into the hook crank. and push those pieces together it's not quite in all the way maybe I still gotta tighten up some of these screws and stuff there we go that's looking better ta-da 
there so there's the bottom of the hook shaft and then I would go in here uh, just let me grab one of these little guys and I'll, I'll just snug it up a little bit not really tighten it because I'm going to take it all apart again anyway and I'll tighten that clamping screw so it will hold uh, clamp hold the uh, uh, crank it'll clamp it around that hook shaft and that's the only thing that holds the hook shaft in place okay then if I came back up to the top here now you see I've got my hook in place there's the little hole for the mm, hinge stud of the positioning bracket but this is where you would have to set the hook point to the needle for the timing and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it um, let's see what I got here is this going to turn yeah there we go I've got stuff jammed up here on the bottom <laughs> that's not going to work if I go back here with that so you can get a better look down yeah so uh, well I, I eyeballed it actually pretty good the hook is up here at the end of the stroke which is in the vicinity of where it's going to have to end up and then it oscillates down to the to the bottom here I think oh no I've got it too far okay so let me get it up and I'm just going to put a screwdriver in one of the slots of the hook ring and just kind of turn that hook so the point is just a little bit past 12 o'clock like that yeah and then it'll go back down so that's just kind of eyeballing it in there for later then I would put the mm, swivel or swivel <laughs> I always call it a swivel the hinge stud of the positioning bracket back into that hole and press it down in there All right I want to go in there we go make sure that my latch is in the locking spot so that it's nice and straight and level make sure my ejector works then I'm going to drop my feed dog in the slot back here remember where it goes into this into the slot of that um, feed bar for the lift right yeah Okay. and then I would turn the machine over and I would go back and I would set the set screw on the hinge stud of the positioning bracket so it's nice and tight and then I would uh, use my feeler gauge to set the height of the feed dog above the throat plate and then use the one uh, set screw to hold the feed dog in place and at the right height okay so uh, if you if you saw I would like to go see my series on the 337 um, it has a, a oscillating hook with a bell crank system also so it might be interesting to see that I didn't dismantle that as much as I did this one uh, in any of my videos because I'd, I'd partially done it before but this one I wanted to do to see more of those more of those parts you know and I've just been kinda doing these videos and taking the taking these p parts a part yeah see that's already that's already in there it won't come out unless I tap it <laughs> with the punch on the bottom isn't that something 
that's how t that's how tight the clearance is and I don't know how they were they were hand doing that stuff I I guess they must have been the hell of a machinist back then and equipment operators to get the clearances on that so tight so I get my punch in there and then there, let me push out that complete bracket now. That's where the punch is pushing there. Okay, so I'll take those parts back off and as I continue along with Cute, the Singer Model 99K. So I hope that was worth your time and maybe you saw something you hadn't seen before. And I uh, always will appreciate any uh, comments and feedback uh, from people. I know that there's a lot of people that have worked on these machines. And they know a lot more about them than me. So, um, if, you, if you see me doing something wrong or giving bad advice, you know, call me, call me out on it. Uh, I, I'm, you're not going to hurt my feelings, you know. Uh, I like to share information, and I think knowledge is power. So, uh, correct me when I'm wrong, and we'll share it with everybody right on the channel. So, people, people get the uh, better information. And I am going to learn about setting the timing and the height and things like that. I, I, I mean, I'm going to do that. No worries. I'll figure it out. But I think the next thing I want to take a look at is this feed control system. I'm expecting it to be like other ones I've done. Um, but we'll find out. So I hope you can come back and visit me again if you find time and, and uh, are interested. Come on back and, and see me and I'll keep working on this. So hope to see you then. Thanks so much for watching. And take care.